I was actually assigned to the World Trade Center site. Our job became to go locate the vehicle, uh, check it out to see if it was salvageable, and bring it back to the shop as quick as possible and get the repairs going so we can get it back to them out in the field. And unfortunately, Rescue 2 and Rescue 1 didn't make it. I put in a lot of work on the truck, but that had no bearing once you realized the total loss of life. If you looked at our trucks, our shells, the bodies, they didn't cave in. They withstood the building landing on them. Totally surprised me that it didn't crush flat. Lately, uh, we've been seeing a lot of new vehicles that were being re replaced for the World Trade Center. It's kind of interesting to see how they start, you know, how they progress in, uh, in the final product. This particular one here is an E1 chassis. It's an E1 cab with the chassis uh, with a Salisbury body on the back. Salisbury constructs the body, they put it on the back. It's a signature series truck that we built. Um, signature series means it's totally custom per the customer's requests. It's not a standard truck that we built. Uh, this is all stainless steel. That's our niche in the, in the marketplace is building stainless steel trucks. Um, no one else does. Stainless steel slide trays, unistruts for the adjustable shelving, the interior seat. It, it just holds up better to the wear and tear that they have to take. New York is one of the busiest companies in the world and it is just a lot more phenomenal than what you'd get out of a local volunteer because these, these trucks are usually on the road probably almost 24 hours a day. They never stop. It, it's built to take it. The floor pans are the heavier material just because that not everyone is always careful when they put stuff back in the compartments and it just reinforces the floor that much more in case something's dropped or, or slammed into the compartment. All the lights are recessed, turn signals, in case they get too close to something. The, the turn signals will actually give rather than break off. This is a custom fabricated 10 inch front bumper for the vehicle, um, reinforced just in case they have to push a vehicle out of the way down there. It's a Series 60 engine with, I believe, 450 horsepower. Uh, the demand that they put forth in the specs is, is pretty rugged. So they need a rugged engine and a, a rugged truck to meet those demands. You know, it's a, it's a big fire department. Uh, the city streets are a little rough around here, and they uh, they do a lot of work. They're, uh, they Rescue 2, for instance, they probably spend more time out on the street than they do in the firehouse. The rig spends more time actually driving around, going to fires, you know, responding to all different types of incidents. And uh, it, gets, it gets used very hard. Uh, I wouldn't say it gets abused, it just gets used very hard. You know, it's, uh, they gotta get there fast, and when they get there, everything's gotta work properly, and the doors get swung open hard, so everything gets, you know, everything kinda gets put to the, to the test. City life isn't a, a easy life for one of these trucks. So, <laughs> um, if we built it any less, it wouldn't last. A lot of it is starting right from the input from the customer, what they're looking for, um, and that comes in form of a spec book, the written specifications from the customers, any um, any sketches they may have, any ideas that they want, as much input from the customer and what he wants for his particular needs, and as the engineer, I'll take that and start laying things out. Uh, the bid is set out for a truck and then Salisbury's will, will give their proposal, and then once everything is okayed from there, they'll come into a sheet metal release. That's when they cut it and bend it up and weld it together on the jig tables. And then the upper body is built the same way, and then they'll, they'll match the lower body with the upper body. 
and then it's lifted and put on a wagon and then we bring it over onto this side of the shop and do as much finishing work on it as we can and then when the chassis is ready for the body they'll lift the body off the wagon and set it on the chassis and then it'll come back into this side of the shop and where we can finish it off. Uh, basically they're built up state and then they have a vendor out in Jersey who is the vendor for, for the company who builds it, which is Salisbury. And they go out to the vendor and they get prepped to come to us. And then when it comes here, we do a final inspection to make sure all of the items that are supposed to be there are there. We look for loose nuts and bolts. We look for wires that might be rubbing on something. All the accessories on it, we have to make sure that they do work. You know, from the lights to the special equipment, which this truck is equipped with, uh, with a generator. It's uh, equipped with uh, hydraulic winches, we have to make sure the suspension, the steering is all good because these trucks are very heavy and they're going to be driving at pretty quick speeds and we got to make sure they could stop, we got to make sure they could steer and then we give it to rescue too to use and uh, do what they have to do with it. We have to make sure it's right so they could use it. Now a lot of the exterior compartments are very similar from one rescue group to the other down there. Now, particularly Rescue 2, they changed a little bit of the interior around just for their design, what's ease for their operations. Uh, these are the seating uh, positions here, and these brackets here are where they, where they hold their uh, self-contained breathing uh, tanks. Uh, these, these aren't for the school, but these are for when they go into the building. These are just, uh, this is regular breathing area here. The scuba tanks are going to be held inside over here for the under, underwater uh, events. Uh, basically, like I said, this is where they ride. You have various uh, shelving here for all types of equipment, which they do carry a, a big variety of all kinds of uh, forcible entry tools and anything they might need to uh, help a trapped victim out somewhere. Uh, over here, this screen over here is uh, a duplicate of the computer that they have in the front, so this way the members can get an idea of what type of job they're going into. They could, uh, they could see what's coming up on the screen. They could take uh, you know, appropriate measures to how they're going to suit up and you know, what tools they might have in their hand when they, when they run out of the rig. Uh, but they're in full contact with them. They can talk to them. They can see it on the screen, what's happening. And uh, they have all the speakers here so they can hear the radio transmissions and have an exact idea of what's happening before they get there. In addition to the windows, which are only actually on this side, but they like to be ready to know exactly what's happening. Obviously, the more they can carry to the scene, the better equipped they are to handle whatever they may come across. As you can tell by like this compartment layout, any leftover area at all is used for something. So instead of leaving it as dead space behind a panel that you can't access, we throw doors and compartmentation in there so they can put something in there. There's no spare room left in these trucks that aren't specified for something. Um, in this compartment, we have 12 gauge stainless steel mounts for all the hearse tools, uh, stainless steel hooks for chains. Uh, this compartment actually has, this is a motorboat motor mount in there for the, I believe they have a Zodiac boat that goes on the roof and that's where the motor will mount for that. This is a HRT reel compartment. They have a portable electric power unit and 100 feet of hydraulic hose to run their hydraulic rescue tools away from the truck if they need to. Wheel chock storage compartments in the wheel wells keeps, keeps the wheel chocks right near the wheels. This is a, uh, a magnetic plate for the exhaust system they have in their barns down there. It'll actually hold a hose on the exhaust so that when the truck is started in the shop, the exhaust is vented to the outside. Hydraulic generator will actually slide right out of the compartment for service so you can get around behind it. it actually makes it easier to service the unit itself. <laughs>